Keep it farming with aim agriculture. Hello, good morning everyone in Uganda. I'm um, welcome RDI, Riviera Dial Investments. I'm glad to welcome you here. Uh, I welcome my brother from AIM. My name is Begumia Wilba. I'm a veterinary practitioner and uh, I'm working here at RDI as a, a trainer in dial farming as a business. Uh, RDI is Riviera Dial Investments where we have the training center and we do train farmers in dairy farming as a business. Uh, we've got uh, good breeds uh, which do uh, good production where we have good cows that can give up to uh, 41 liters a day. And the, we train these farmers in terms of management, breeding, record keeping and many other things that are needed when you are in dairy farming. I'm happy to host you here at RDI and we are going to take you through what we are doing at RDI. So this is the foot bath, meaning that whoever is coming to the farm must disinfect and the, the use of disinfecting is to prevent or to protect our animals from getting other diseases from the people who are coming in the farm. So this is one way of protecting our animals or from uh, as the spread of diseases from one place to another. Yeah. Then when we are done with disinfecting, we start our move from here. I can show you that this is the store where we do the, the food mixing. Uh, like we do the dairy meal from here. We mix maize blend and many other ingredients. Uh, then we feed to our cows. Uh, from here, we have the office, which you can see here where we keep all the records. Um, when I talk of the records, there are very many records that I'm going to tell you. We have the insemination record because we use artificial insemination to get the good breeds. And we also uh, take the milk production record from each cow morning and evening. Um, we also calving record and health and treatment record. They are all here. Uh, in this office, uh, the operations manager office. And then next we have the chilling room. Uh, this chilling room will have the kura whereby we can keep our milk for a given period of time before it is taken to the diary or to the uh, processing uh, units like para diaries. But uh, currently it is not in use because our milk has ready market. Uh, immediately after milking, like you are going to see, it is taken. So we don't need to put those costs of cooling and whatnot. And yet our milk is taken immediately after milking. But we are on standby. In case of anything, our cooler is there. Uh, electricity is there, the generator is on standby. Our milk is already safe here at RDI. From here, we are going to move into the milking parlor and at the same time the feeding parlor. We are going to see our breeds feeding. Uh, at this time milking is already done, but at least we still have our cows uh, still taking their feeds or their meals. This side we have uh, the, 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 the cows that are near to dry and the, the ones that are on steaming up, they feed from this side. And the, the, we supplement from this side and the other side we have the, the, the cows that are in lactation and the, the ones that are near to give birth from this side, they are dry cows. Um, so here, um, this, this is spent grain that we use to feed our cows to supplement. Uh, we get it from Nairo breweries. Uh, good enough, we have the, the suppliers here in Barara. So we use it to supplement to our cows. And this is silage uh, from maize uh, or corn silage. And the, it is one of the supplements that we use to feed our cows. And the, this is uh, one of the best that we have at RDI. This is a jersey breed. Uh, like I said, jersey breed gives us the best milk in terms of quality, butter fat content and it gives us good milk because it can give us up to 38 liters per day and if you have like a small farmer you have five of them still you can get good milk compared to frisian and here 
I have uh, also the best Frisian, one of the tallest cows we have here in Bara district, I believe. Uh, very friendly and very tall cow. So she's very good, feeding very well and friendly. And this is because the way you handle your cows, that's when they will come friendly. So he's here. Um, the rest you can do crossbreeding, you get Frisian uh, to Asia, you get Jazet, Frisian, and the reason is to get good quality of milk. Since Jazet gives you uh, milk with, butter, uh, with high butter fat content, so you can simply cross with Frisian so that you, you, you balance the, the butter fats in milk. So if you cross Jazet, to Frisian, it means you are going to get a cross of Frisian and Jersey. So as you are crossing, you are also changing the production, you are also changing the milk quality. So this is what we can do. Yeah, these are Frisian, crosses of Frisian and the Jersey. Like this one is a Jersey breed, but from a cross of Frisian and it gives giving us good milk. Um, they have just finished uh, milking, so they are now waiting to be set free to go and feed from the grazing farm. And uh, I think we shall be giving them a chance to go and graze from the farm. Like I told you, we just supplement at the time of milking. So at this time, I think they, they will be free to go and feed from the grazing paddocks. And then they will come back here in the afternoon for the afternoon milk, milking session and we normally do it at, a, at a exactly three. When they ring the bell, they come here, they find their meal already here and we start the milking immediately. A Frisian gives you a lot of milk, like you all know, it can give you up to 60 liters and above, but its milk is not of good quality uh, in terms of butter fat content. Um, it is only Jersey that has got the highest butter fat content, even compared to our local breeds of uh, Ankore cows. Jersey has got good milk. Uh, the Jersey can give us the best cow that gave us high milk was 38 liters a day, and followed by Asia, which gave us uh, 40 liters, then Frisian gave us 42 liters a day. So we, we decided to have those three breeds at RDI and uh, they are our best performers in terms of milk production. When you have these breeds, I'll, I'll tell you um, how you should feed them. Uh, one is that these cows, they can go in farms and graze. They eat pastures in the farm. But when they are eating these pastures, I want a farmer to know which kind of pastures do you have in your farm? Because we normally say, if you don't have more than five varieties in your farm, then that means you don't have pastures. And for that reason, we decide to start supplementing our cows. There are several varieties of pastures in the farm. Uh, we have the natural pastures and we have these improved pasture, pasture varieties. So, um, these improved varieties, they were extracted from the ones that we have, we have here locally. Uh, for example, we have the Nandis Atelier Anceps, we have uh, the Kong Signo, we have uh, the Hyperalian Rufa, we have uh, very many varieties. We have the Chikuyu grass here and uh, many other varieties. And these varieties, they have got different nutrient factors and these are the required by the cows. For example, you can get uh, um, high protein from Nandis Atelia Anceps. You can get uh, carbohydrates from uh, Hyperlenian Rufa. You can get um, uh, also uh, protein from the Chikuyu grass. We also have a uh, Kong signal, which is also very important. So all these varieties, they give different um, nutrients from, for the cows. And the, not only pastures, but also legumes. They are natural legumes. When you are walking around the farm, you will see some legumes. And these legumes, they are very, very good sources of proteins for the cows. Uh, you know, like in human beings, when we are eating, we have food and sauce. So it means when these cows are eating pastures, they also need sauce. And the sauce for cows are legumes. 
And these legumes, they are the ones that give you a lot of proteins for these cows. And you know proteins, it is, the, it is in high percentage of milk. So if your cows don't get proteins, then that means even your milk will be of poor quality. Uh, when you're supplementing, we encourage farmers to make silage and we can make silage from different things. Uh, one, we can grow maize and chop it, make silage. We can establish napier gardens, chop it and make silage. We can uh, grow sorghum, chop it and make silage. Um, when you're making silage, for example, you've made corn silage, um, you don't need to put in many other additives. For example, I see people adding sugars or molasses in maize, uh, in maize silage, which is an extra cost because maize itself, it is sweet. And the reason that's why we put uh, molasses or sugars is to make this thing sweet. So the, the maize itself is sweet, so you don't need to add on, because, because in farming we are looking at how you can cut the costs as you are increasing the production. So when you start putting many things which are not necessary, they will still put you down. So we encourage to use morasses or scarborough, whatever, in other things like in napier, which is not sweet, that one you can put morasses and the other additives uh, and maize brand. But you are making silage uh, from maize, then you are adding uh, maize brand. That is a very big mistake that farmers do. So um, we do train farmers on how to make silage in an appropriate way. So we believe that this cow should be supplemented because if you don't have, like I said, five varieties in your farm, this cow will not be eating enough. So we encourage you to come and supplement them. And when we are supplementing, um, we give them silage, and on top, top of silage, we use um, a spent grain. Uh, you know, spent grain, these are the things from cereals, like from Nile breweries, berry, and these people are making local beer. Those things, you can bring them and you supplement. And you can also make uh, dairy meals. Um, you mix the different concentrates and make a dairy meal and supplement your cows and these cows they can eat fresh or they can eat uh, silage when whether you are eat feeding fr um, fresh or silage or that is the fermented feeds uh, we encourage you to still supplement using those ingredients that i've told you you must make sure that these cows get um, other minerals for example mineral blocks because these feeds that we, we we supplement with sometimes they need to be supported with minerals different minerals so if you cannot have those minerals in the feeds on the, in the concentrates you can buy the mineral blocks and put them somewhere um, you they so that they can leak those minerals those minerals are very important because they have sub, they have got very many ingredients that can even support these cows to come on heat as early as possible. Because these high milkers, they have the tendency of coming um, in heat and they don't show you the signs. So if they eat very well, if they get the minerals, they will show you the signs of heat. Uh, one thing that maybe farmers need to understand is that uh, First of all, you need to categorize your cows when you are going to feed them. You have the lactating heart, you have the growers, you have the calves, and you have the dry cows. So we encourage you to categorize these cows and feed them in a special manner. So for example, if you are feeding a dairy cow or a lactating cow, this is the cow that we should say, you supplement it with silage, with maize bland, with the other ingredients that you put in the feeds. Um, I, I don't expect to see a farmer feeding the growers with silage. And you have a farm, they are pastures, you have hay. So you can feed the young growers or the, the, the calves with dry hay and the pellets, if you can buy the pellets and other things. Then the silage and this may, um, dairy meals, you feed them to the lactating cows. Then we, ho we, we have a, another category of the dry cows. If a cow is drying, that means the cow is stopping milking. 
you need now to reduce on the amount of feeds you've been giving to this cow because the moment you keep giving um, the, the feeds that you give to this cow which have given birth today or yesterday or last week it means this cow will still continue giving you milk and remember this cow is supposed to be dried at seven months of pregnant so you should reduce on the amount of feeds that you give and if at all you can completely stop supplementing this cow until it is coming back for steaming up then you continue giving the supplements but when you are drying it we encourage farmers to stop feeding with these supplements and you take this cow in a special uh, paddock for proper management and then we have the heifers heifers these are the ones which are almost getting ready to be serviced um, to calf or the ones which are pregnant but never calved down so we prepare them in a manner that we bring them near for proper steaming up because you see it lives here when it is very young when it is blowing and by the time it comes back here it is already pregnant and not used to people so we bring it near to people we start introducing these supplements we show them where this where it is supposed to be that's why you find that when they ring the bell, like at the time of milking, each cow knows where to enter because you did it at steaming up. So when we are supplementing with this, uh, with supplements, each lactating cow, here we do in, in, in measurements, we give 12 kilograms of silage in, 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 in a separate trough. On top of 12, 12, kilo, 12 kilograms of silage, we add one spade of maize blend. Uh, sorry, of uh, spent grain from Nilo Broweries. But if you have a daily meal, you give two kilograms per feeding. And when do you feed? For us here, we have, like I said, we let these cows go to the farm, feed. Then at the time of milking, it's when we supplement these cows. At, at the time of milking, um, that is morning and evening. And like I said, we are trying to cut the costs other than a farmer keeping a cow indoors and every time you are giving feeds, you are giving feeds, if you have enough farmland, you can let them go and feed on the fresh pasture. They come and you supplement at the time of milking. That's how we are doing it. I said 12 kilograms of silage, then 2 kilograms of dairy meal or spent grain. That's how we feed our lactating cows. Then this side where we have the cows that are on steaming up and the cows that are nearly to dry or stop milking, we just give them little feeds because they are, we are introducing these new feeds to them. And these ones which are going to dry, we are now reducing on the amount of feeds that we'll be giving to these cows. So that's why you see it is open they just eat in out. But when we go to the other side, where we have the high milkers, that means we have these ones which are in early lactation. Those ones, they need to eat enough and they have to eat separately. So you will find they eat in um, tubics, like you bring plates for everyone. You, you don't share from one plate. So they are fed on, on, on a special manner. We can let them go.
dear farmers, uh, these are some of the feeds that we, we feed our cows. This is an apia. We've just got it from the garden. And uh, what I want to tell you is that when you bring such feeds from the garden, don't just start chopping immediately. I want to show you this. Um, this is a stone and this is something that it is, it is rotten, a material. So if you chop these things from the garden, you bring them here, sort them. Now, for example, I've just picked this stone. Just started taking it to the machine. This stone was going to, was going to cause a problem with your machine. And that is going to be a cost to repair the machine. So we advise farmers to always sort before they start running the machine. And these things, which is rotting, for example, this one, it can cause aflatoxins in your feeds and you end up having issues with your cows. So you check and remove these things that can bring in aflatoxins in your feed. Then another thing, we encourage farmers to first wither the materials that they are going to chop. Now you see it is now shining, so we shall put these things here to reduce on the moisture content in the napia so that when you are chopping they go very well and the cow will eat something that is a bit withered and it will help the cow to get the dry matter content whether from the fresh because you've put it on sunshine you've reduced on the moisture content then you make a meal for your cows Let me, let me help you. Grab your cross circle. This is the chopped fresh napier, which is now ready to be fed to our cows. Depending on how you feed your cows in their categories, um, here we use this basin. And the, if you are feeding the alactators, uh, like from this side where we have the alactators, we give uh, 12 kilograms of, of feeds. For example, this is fresh napier. I'm going to use my container, which is a basin. So, if you put in a bag and you put on a weighing scale, you will get around 12 to 13 kilograms of this chopped. And you bring and put to the feed trough. But remember, the feed trough should be clean. So, for example, we've been feeding in the morning and they have gone for grazing. If you bring this fresh chopped and you just pour here, like the way you see it, the cow may refuse to eat these feeds. So we say you should first clean the feed trough and remove the leftovers for the morning. Because right now you are preparing for the next session, that is afternoon session. So you need to remove all these leftovers and you make sure that the feed trough is clean enough. Okay, so now I'll put this fresh chopped, which is weighing around 12 kilograms. Then on top of this, I will go and bring my spent grain from Nairo Breweries. Each cow, I put one spade weighing around three to five kilograms. 
Remember, this is one cow, and I do it morning and evening at the time of milking. So I don't mix them, I just sprinkle them, just like this. Some of the things we just do them to save time and to reduce on the labor. So now this is my meal for the afternoon session. So it is prepared in this way. In the afternoon, the cow will come and find the meal ready here. At the time of milking is when we give this meal. After milking, we let cows go and feed from the farms. So here, I'm, uh, these are the feeds that we, we have. Uh, this is the fresh napier we've just chopped. I, I want to show you uh, one of the reasons why we need to wither the fresh napier. Like you cut and first put it on sunshine for like two to three hours. Um, when you chop it and it is very fresh, I'm going to squeeze it. You see this water? It is now coming out from the chopped one. It means it has got high levels of water and moisture content you need. So when the cow takes this, it is like uh, taking a lot of water um, from the feeds. And how can we reduce on this water from the fresh napier? We need to first put it on sunshine and we wither it. Alternatively, that's why you see us adding either maize blend or the, the spent grain from Nairo breweries. Because those things, they help us to extract the water from the fresh napier. So this is the fresh napier. And if you don't have uh, the fresh napier, or if you, if you want to make silage, still you will go through the process of chopping. And this is the silage that we, we are talking about. Um, as you can see, this is silage from corn or from maize. So it is ready to be fed. Uh, it was also fresh like this, but because of the process that it has gone through of the fermentation, and that's why it is appearing like this. So this one, it is far better than the fresh napier because it has got some uh, dry matter content in it, uh, though at low levels. So when you're going to feed this, still you use a basin, which weighs up to 12 to 13 kilograms. You put on the basin. Uh, so uh, from here you can put on a weighing scale if you are not maybe experienced know that the basin can carry more than 12 to 13 kilograms you put in a sack and put uh, on a weighing scale then you do the same and bring it here in the feed trough and on top of silage still you do the same as you're doing the fresh napier you also add um, if you have um, the spent grain you put here, you may not need to put maize bran because maize bran is already in the corn which we chopped at the right stage. So you may not need to add um, the maize bran or what not. We are looking at reducing the costs at the farm. So this is how we feed our lactating cows at RDI.